Oh, someone asked me. Someone asked me what sort of tools I've got to do this job. Uh, a lot, some of which I bought well in recent months, and uh, but the vast majority of it, of it I've had for years. These are just brilliant. Last for a couple of hours. Give you a whoops, swamped, nice bright light. Various selections of screwdrivers, and that's not including my electrical set. Um, various screws, got more in the garage if I need them, and roll plugs. Um, side cutters, pliers, um, drill bits, mole grips, a couple of spirit levels, including the big one at the end there. Uh, various scrapers, because sometimes there's more than me here scraping. Uh, paint brushes, of course, and I've got rollers in the other room. Uh, these little uh, takeaway dishes, which I save now and um, use for mixing my plastering. They're brilliant for that. Um, bolsters, chisels, hammers, plasterers, hog, bit of filler, and then we come down here. And just an idea of some of the little SDS drill. A um, couple of ordinary drills, one there and one there. Um, a multi tool, a well, it's a basically a circular saw, but it's a plunge saw, brilliant for doing floorboards. Sander, of course. Um, oh, my mind's gone complete blank. Hacksaw, of course, large one. Various prizer bars. And uh, in the electrical section, we've got. Cable varying sorts, 2.5, 1.5, 1 mil, 6 mil, 10 mil. Uh, 10, well no, it's 3 millimetres sleeving. And uh, so I've got some 10 mil I think. Clips, various electrical crimpers. Uh, outside light, a box full of all the sockets and bits and pieces I need. A uh, box of ceiling spotlights under there. Tape, blue, brown. Grey, not sure about the grey, I'm sure it'll get used at some point. And, uh, and I keep all these little bits of pine because they're so useful. Like um, when you're hanging ceiling raises up on the ceiling between the joists, it's all lath and plaster. I generally cut a bit above that goes between the joists above, so I've got a nice firm fixing to put everything on. Uh, you know, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Cable reel, of course, you need one of those. I've got a couple actually in the house, but this one's more a heavy duty cable. Uh, but there are times when I have to uh, disconnect the fuse box and I've only got one socket left in the house. So, you know, that's fairly essential and it's got a cutout built in as well if there's a, there's a RCD problem. So that's good. A good workmate. Well, he's not much of a mate, he doesn't speak much. Uh, but I did have one. Uh, oh, I don't know, I bought it a couple of years ago. Uh, in Aldi, but it just felt like a cheap Meccano set. This is an old one, really sturdy one, and uh, my father had it put on these hardwood pieces on the top. Beautiful piece of kit, that. That will really hold a big piece of timber tight, and just what you want when you're working in here. If you want a really firm platform, you definitely need a workmate. Uh, PVA glue, uh, most people know it as woodworker's glue, uh, but I use a lot of this. So for, you know, 10 quid, whatever it is, for a container of this, well worth it. I mean, I've already gone down by about a quarter. And, uh, you know, when you have to uh, chase out channels, that sort of thing, filling it up with bonding plaster, because the existing plaster is so dry, if you put wet plaster on it, it just sucks all the moisture out of the new plaster, and then it'll probably fall out. And if you soak the wall in PVA, or at least the channel, um, the bonding plaster will stick quite well. So that's essential, PVA glue. Uh, and perhaps the most essential bit of equipment in the whole house, the broom. Yes, I know Steve, you wanted to see the broom. There it is. Yep, that gets used a fair, fair bit, as well as a dustpan and brush. Doesn't seem to matter what you do, wherever you go, there's this stuff. <laughs> and you sweep up, and you're working here for a week and it's back and then you need that again that seems an endless task i'll be glad when i get to the end of the dust 
I've also got this electric oven, uh, which I bought through Facebook Marketplace. Great double oven, works fine. Um, that will all get actually installed in this room, that's why it's in here. And uh, over here, got our five ring gas hob in excellent condition, uh, which matches the oven. These Art Deco lights are absolutely fab. Uh, they were actually in the house, they were in the front room, and I've removed those. Uh, plan is to make these stairs a little bit little bit glitzy, a little bit Hollywood, um, film noir, you know, or yeah, very Hollywood. And uh, I shall put some pink bulbs in that, I think, something like that. That'll be nice when it lights up the stairs. And the idea is I shall put in a light sensor that detect detects if anybody comes out on the landing or if they come out in the hallway and start to walk up the stairs, they'll just come on automatically. So, you know, your way is always lit. And uh, I was, interestingly, I was talking to an old friend of mine, Nick Smurden, hello. <laughs> um, many years served electrician. And uh, he was right. And it's something that, you know, I've come to realise since I've been in this house, is that you can never have enough lighting. And the days of pendant lights really has gone now. So, you know, you've got to, it's better to have far too much lighting and be able to turn it off than too little and I would agree with that so I'm in a fortunate position really that with the house that's empty like this I can do it you know and uh, if I want to put a light in even if I don't put the light fitting up run the cables where they've got to be put the switches in and then you can come to do those later even up to the point of decorating you can come and fit your switches but get the cables in and spend the time so whatever budget I had for cables is going to be run fairly short I'd have said you know, I'm going to need a lot more than I thought, um, you know, to uh, give the amount of lighting that's required in this place. I mean, particularly when you look at, sorry, it's dark, it's because the window lights uh, change the exposure. But, you know, this was a common thing in houses this old. All the lights were right in the window, uh, which doesn't really light it. And because I'm thinking... My bed is eventually going to go there. The head of the bed will go in the alcove. Probably a little couple of little tables each side, something like that. Maybe a bedside light, maybe a light behind the headboard. Don't don't ask too many questions. Uh, maybe a light <laughs> light behind the headboard. Maybe an underlit bed. So when you get out of the bed, it lights the floor, so you can see where you're walking. I don't know. Lots of possibilities. LED panels, all sorts. But that means running these cables in. And let's face it, if I decide at the end I don't need them, I can snip them back up again. But best is to get these cables in now and all the switches. This is why I mentioned in this particular room, I was going to put a three-way switch. You know, it has only got one light for this room, but I thought it'd be nice if you could press a switch, light up the lights by the bed, light up a main light, and then light up some other supplementary lighting. So this old 1950s, 60s, switch God, the light is I mean that's pathetic <laughs> look it makes you know even, even in the evening it makes no difference this room whether it's on or off <laughs> so you know they're all sort of things that I've got to think about really this is the uh, back room in the house and which will eventually become the kitchen hence I mentioned this oven earlier on but my son's bedroom is right above so that means before I finish his bedroom, this is the back room, um, which will ultimately become the kitchen. It will give a bit more room. I, well, I say that, that was the plan. So I may yet change it, but this was the old kitchen. And uh, he really wants, well, he definitely wants plastering right through. But because this is the back room and it's going to be the kitchen, See the pipes from the boiler? That was in. So that's my son's room above. But it means I can't really finish his room unless I've made sure that all the lighting for the kitchen is in place. And whilst that strip light's quite nice, what I'd really like in here is some spotlights. Now it's not practical really for me to stop working upstairs and then coming down fitting spotlights. So my plan is from above, to make suitable holes in the ceiling on a joist, you know, between two joists. So I've got a strip of spotlights there and another strip of spotlights there. And I will make holes where the hole cutter's got to go 
and I will leave the cables up there with enough slack and to one side so they won't get cut when I use the hole saw and then I can come along and connect those without having to worry about his room above and it's uh, mm, something else I've got to think about Anyway, as I said in my last video, I am actually finished now for Christmas. I'm not going to do any more here until... I might do a couple of days between Christmas and New Year. A little bit of painting. That would make a change, wouldn't it? You can watch painting going on at Ralph's house. <laughs> that would be a step forward. Uh, but really, I'm not... It's, this is really kind of a bit of bonus material. and talking about all the tools that I've had to buy to do this kind of work. You know, you're not going to do it with a hammer and a screwdriver. You need far more than that. You know, even chasing out back boxes, uh, that's always difficult in this house because they are not not like the soft Victorian reds, they're flattened, they're quite hard bricks. But the mortar between them is that lime mortar, so that's soft as anything, but the brick's hard as nails. So uh, you can't really um, use a hammer and well, you can use a hammer and chisel, but you're soon going to get tired. So, uh, you know, I, t I tend to go for the SDS drill. But I'm very careful with it because, you know, it's easy to dislodge a brick in a wall and then you've got an even bigger job to fix. So, uh, you know, that's the sort of thing I'm up against. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget to like, you know, down below, down below the screen here. Uh, every like helps. And uh, it also encourages me to make more videos and keep you posted on uh, the transformation of this house. Uh, which it will be. You are not going to recognise it by the time I've finished. And interesting to see someone who isn't a tradesman actually get through and do it. And uh, I'm very determined. So that's all from Ralph's house for this Sunday. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.